Good morning, folks. Dylan here from Fabrication Guy, and today we're going to be breaking down the differences between the Miller Electric Spectrum 375 30 amp plasma cutter versus the Hobart Air Force 40i 40 amp plasma cutter. So, why are we comparing these two? Well, Hobart and Miller are parent companies to one another. These machines look identical. Uh, the specs are very much the same. However, the Hobart 40i has 10 amps more power than the Spectrum 375, and it is the same price. So you're getting a lot more performance out of the 40i than you are the Spectrum 375. So we wanted to compare that today, show you guys what that actually calculates to into a real world application, and explain to you guys why we really think the Hobart Air Force 40i is a better value. Now, all the information in this video that we're gonna be referencing can be found on the official Amazon pages for both of these machines, which I will have down in the video description. I'll have links to those if you guys want to reference those pages or check them out on Amazon, as well as we're taking a look at the official websites where we're getting the spec sheets. So if you go to Miller's website and Hobart's website, you'll see a little link right here that says spec sheet, and that will open up a PDF with all the official specs from the manufacturers that you guys can check out. And there's a lot of really good information in here. Now, the first thing we really wanna take a look at when comparing both of these machines and kind of the meat and potatoes of this whole video and what's gonna make the biggest difference to you as a user are the cut ratings. What are you going to see with a 30 amp machine versus a 40 amp machine? Because both of these machines are the same price. So how much bigger of a difference is that extra 10 amps gonna make with the Hobart 40i compared to the Miller Spectrum 375? Well, luckily in the manuals, they provide us with these really nice uh, tables here showing us the different inch per minute ratings of both of these machines at different cut thicknesses with mild steel. Now keep in mind, the Miller Spectrum 375, this is turned all the way up to 30 amps on 240 volt, and the Hobart 40i, this is turned up to 40 amps on 240 volt. So both of these machines will be maxed out at these ratings. The Miller 375, if you take a look at this colored arrow here in green, on 3 8 inch mild steel, it can cut 18 inches per minute. If we take a look at the Hobart 40i, you take a look at the green arrow, on 3 8 inch mild steel, you're getting 36 inches per minute. That is over double the speed of the official rating from Hobart and, and Miller, you're gonna get double the speed on 3 8 inch mild steel. So if you're in a demanding work environment where you're making a lot of cuts, that extra power is gonna go a long way on 3 8 inch. But that doesn't just go for 3 8 inch, it shows itself in the thicker material as well. So taking a look at half inch with the Miller Spectrum 375, you're talking 10 inches per minute with half inch mild steel. If you go over to the 40i, half inch mild steel, 22 inches per minute. That's over double the speed. If we take a look at 5 8 six inches per minute with the Miller Spectrum 375, 5 8 on the Hobart 40i, 13 inches per minute. So basically that extra 10 amps of power is gonna give you double the cutting speed on all of these different thicknesses of mild steel. What that's also gonna translate into is that 40 amps of power, you're gonna have a thicker severance cut. You know, you're gonna be able to go up to three quarters of an inch, possibly a little bit thicker, uh, and you're gonna be able to make a cut. It won't be super pretty, right? So this is not like an official clean cut rating, but you will be able to puncture through material of that thickness while the Miller Spectrum 375 is not going to get anywhere near a three quarter inch cut. I and mean, if it does, it's going to be really, really sloppy and require a lot of prep work to use. So that is really where you're going to see the biggest differences between both of these machines is that cutting thickness and the speed, just a bigger bang for your buck. So without a doubt, the Hobart 40i is definitely the machine to go with. But let's compare a couple of the other things so you can take a look at some of the things that the Miller Spectrum offers that the Hobart 40i does not. Now, the only thing that you will lose going with the Hobart 40i over the Spectrum 375 is the hard shell case. Case. All right, the 40i does not offer a hard shell case, but I have to tell you that my old Hypertherm machine had one of those hard shell cases, and while it did work well, it was actually really a pain to get the machine in there and to get all the cords in there to make them fit properly. So while this would be usable, you could just as easily go to Home Depot and buy one of their plastic uh, toolbox cases and stick the machine in there and then have plenty of room around it to throw like a welding helmet and your cords and everything and it not be a really tight, compact space. That's just my opinion, but like I said, that's really the only thing that you're losing. And if it has to do an extra 10 amps of power and I get to lose a hard shell case, I'm all about it. Give me the Hobart 40i all day long. Now, a few other similarities and questions that we've got about these machines is, are they both dual voltage? The answer is yes, they're both dual voltage and they both come with the plugs that you need to run them on both 120 and, one, and 240. So that is not a problem. So they come with the plugs, they're both dual voltage and having a dual voltage 40 amp machine is pretty impressive. Now keep in mind, even though the Hobart 40i is a 40 amp machine and the Spectrum 375 is a 30 amp machine, 
when you're on a 120 volt connection, you're going to see no difference in the cutting capacity of either of these machines. You're very much limited by the power that the machine is getting. So you're not going to see any type of cut difference between the two. They're going to be identical. So that only applies to a 120 volt connection. As soon as you plug them into 240, that's where you're going to see that extra 10 amps of power come to life. And you're going to have a lot more cutting capacity with the Hobart Air Force 40i. Now, in terms of lead length on the torch and the work clamp or the ground, they're both 12 foot. So no difference between the Hobart or the Miller. Usually the more expensive machines like uh, Hypertherm, they actually have a 20 foot lead length on their machines. Uh, and you would expect Miller to have a 20 foot on theirs, but unfortunately they don't. It's only a 12 foot. So that's kind of a bummer, uh, but even more so of a reason to go with the 40i because you're not losing anything in terms of lead length. Now, because it's my job to show you guys all the different machines at all the different price points, I wanted to help put the Hobart 40i in perspective with some of the cheaper alternatives uh, that are Chinese made machines. Okay, so this is the Prime Weld Cut 60. This is a really inexpensive, very high power plasma cutter that we actually have multiple videos on our channel showing this thing cutting and it's very impressive for the price it's right around 650 dollars uh, this is it here on amazon and i'll post a link down in the video description on this on amazon if you want to reference this page as well the link will be down in the description but this machine around 650 dollars 60 amps of cutting power and it is absolutely amazing how thick a steel this machine can cut it is very very impressive for the price now what's the difference between something like this and the hobart 40i well this machine is made in china the hobart 40i is made in the u.s there's going to be a big difference in quality there so if you're someone who is a weekend warrior and you know you're just working on your jeep or you know you have a shop and or, or, or some acreage and you're like i need something to you know work on trailers add a ramp or build this build that uh, something like a prime weld cut 60 could be a great inexpensive option that will last you a long time however if you're like a heavy user and you're someone who's going to be using your machine multiple times in a week and it's going to see a lot of abuse then something like the hobart 40i is going to hold up a lot better to a very uh, demanding work environment where it's going to get beat up right these cheaper chinese machines while they're nice and they have great power they're just not as resilient as the american made machines so just keep that in mind and i wanted to mention this machine because if anybody out there hasn't heard these Chinese machines have a lot of power for a very, very cheap price. And Prime Weld uh, in itself is a company that even though it's a Chinese made machine, they have customer service here in the US. It comes with a three year warranty and they actually have parts availability and you can order replacement parts and consumables. So they're doing the best they can to be as close to, you know, one of these bigger brands like Miller or, or Hobart or Hypertherm, uh, but they're just coming in at a lot cheaper price. So I just wanted to show you guys this, if that's something you're interested in. I'll put links in the video description uh, to the cutting test of these as well, if you wanna check them out. So guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. Very simple. That extra 10 amps of power translates into a lot more cutting speed and a lot more cutting power. And I think you'd be crazy to buy the Spectrum 375 over the Hobart Air Force 40i. That extra 10 amps of power is just undeniable. The only other thing to consider is parts availability, but any shop that I've been to that has Miller parts available also has had Hobart parts. So if that's something, you know, you have a dealer in your area, that could be possibly something you need to look into. But like I said, for the most part, I have seen Hobart and Miller in the same shops and it's never been a problem for me. So I hope this video was helpful. Like I said, I'll post links to both of these machines down in the video description. If you guys enjoyed this video and you guys want to see more tool comparisons, feel free to subscribe or leave a comment. Tell me what you guys think about these two machines. I'd love to hear your experiences and we will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.